Hey guys, it's Mrs. Tyson again. Welcome back. You should have your packet out. Looks like this over here. And I'm going to go ahead and share my presentation with you guys. Today's lesson is lesson 19. Uh, just another reminder. When we do virtual learning, you're going to watch this lesson video on Google Classroom first. Then as you're doing that, you're going to be filling out your packet. At the end of class, you're going to fill out your exit ticket. If you have any questions, you're going to come to the live stream at 12.55 to 1.20. If you want to discuss something, come then. If you still have questions after the live stream, you can come to my office hours. All those things can be found on Google Classroom. Links to get to those live streaming uh, events can be found on Google Classroom. Please remember to just keep the comments on Google Classroom about learning. And then finally, if you want those extra resources, verses, videos, other instructions, you can go to Google Classroom and look on there. All right, let's begin with a prayer. Please bow your heads, close your eyes, let's pray. Dear God, we just want to thank you so much that we can keep learning, even though <clears throat> this virus is taking over. God, I pray that you'll keep our families safe and healthy and help us, Lord, to glorify you with all that we're doing and saying at home and with our families. Help us to have extra patience today and love toward them, just like you showed us. We pray this in your name. Amen. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I have a little frog in my throat. Today we are... Uh, starting again with God's presence, module three. So let's start with our verse. Uh, I'm going to show it to you here. I'm going to play it for you in just a second. Just a reminder, you can look this up on Google Classroom if you ever want to review this. Here we go. Ooh, sorry, that was a lot at first. Make sure you work on that verse so you're ready for your verse quiz. You can practice again and again and again. I'm going to move on. Uh, you can replay this portion of the video or go to the Classwork tab on Google Classroom. Okay, guys, time to review that pattern statement. You should be working on this right here, writing it down as we're going along. Okay, here we go. A particular blank communicates a particular blank. You should be writing a particular structure communicates a particular message. And if you're wondering what that means, just a reminder, this is the structure of the book of Leviticus and the message that it communicates is at first the outside edges are about the same thing and then we move toward the middle and the very middle is the focus of the book. That's the day of the atonement. So the message is as you're reading this book, the piece in the middle is supposed to be the most important to the reader's mind. All right, our objectives for today. We're going to name five commands of moral purity that God gave to his people. We're going to create one question and answer set for this category. Let's remind ourselves of the setting. It's happening the year Israel camped at Mount Sinai, at the foot of Mount Sinai. And it's happening outside the tent of meeting. Moses hears God's voice, uh, God speaking from the inside out to Moses. This is a quick review. First, we started the book off with two types of sacrifices. Thank you sacrifices and I'm sorry sacrifices. We see five different offerings there. The end of the book, we look at the same concept ritual, but this time it's not sacrifices, it's feasts. There's seven different kinds and they are to remember what God has done. Then as we move toward the inside of the book, we talk about priests at the beginning, it's ordaining priests, and then we have that story about Nadab and Abihu who didn't follow God's commands, and even though they were ordained, they didn't obey, and they were unfortunately killed. At the end of the book, oh, we go back to priests, and God tells Moses about the high standards that priests have. Then as we move toward the middle, we talk about purity. Yesterday, we talked about clean and unclean and what that meant, and then today, we're going to talk about purity again, but moral purity. Here's our video. The question over here is about Israel's moral purity. The Israelites were called to live differently than the Canaanites. They were to care for the poor instead of overlooking them. They were to have a high level of sexual integrity, and they were to promote justice throughout their entire land. Now here at the center... That's it. 
So if you need to watch that again, just uh, go back, watch that clip again. We're at the bottom of our page. We're going to draw this. So right now we're at the bottom of page one right here. You should be drawing this image in that page. Go ahead and pause the video and then draw those pieces on your paper. Okay, welcome back. You should have paused that video, drawn that, and now we're going to move on. Here we go, our next video. But simply coming into contact with these things makes you impure? They do, but we have to keep in mind that it's not wrong or sinful to be ritually impure. You just wait a few days, take a bath, offer sacrifice, and you're pure again. What is inappropriate is entering into God's presence when you're in an impure state. Now, there's more purity laws over here in this section. Yeah, these focus on Israel's moral behavior. So these are laws about social justice, healthy relationships, having sexual integrity. Living by these laws will make Israel into a morally pure people who can live near God's presence. Those are the three solutions. Now, you've probably noticed that they surround the very center of this book. And it's here that we find a really important ritual. Okay, we're going to skip that for now. Let's jump into our next piece is our definitions. The first word is reap. We're going to find this in our text. It means to gather a crop or harvest. The next word is statute. It just means law. The next word is, it's a pair of words actually, mediums and necromancers. That means people who communicate with the dead. A sojourner is the next piece, is one who stays for a temporary period of time, so like a traveler, someone who's passing through. All right, just a reminder, um, when you are done reading the text, you're going to complete your worksheet. You're going to use the answers on your worksheet to then finish your exit ticket on the Google Classroom. You don't need to take a photo of your homework today. You're going to type it in on your exit ticket, and that's what I'll check. But save your yellow sheets because we'll need them for our final project. Just a reminder, we're going to have a live stream at 12.55 today. If you need additional help, come on in at 1.45. If you don't know how to get there, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to Google Classroom. You, excuse me, you're going to go to Google Classroom. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're Michigan or Maryland. I'm just going to pull up Michigan's right now. My favorite way to do it is to go to the Classwork page because everything is organized. Um, at the top are our videos for the, each lesson. You can see yesterday's video there. Then if you need help reading the scripture or want to read along with me, that video is here. The exit tickets are right here. And then if you want to chat, you're going to click on this link right here. Um, this is the chat for the 145 time. And then this is the link to chat at 1255. If you want to review your memory verses, here they are. And if you want to look at those videos, the Bible Project videos, um, you can look at those right here too. All the information you need is right here on your Google Classroom. Thanks so much guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.